Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Morning Breath. I'm Anthony. <sighs> I'm here to breathe with you, but today we also, I have uh, something that kind of came in today um, about uh, what brings forth, uh, you know, what's the primary source of human suffering? Uh, what causes most people suffering? Think about that for a minute. And I'm going to run the intro. Good morning. Uh, good morning. What is the primary source? Let's see what what the uh, opinions are out here. Tell me, tell us, share with us what you think. What is the primary source of suffering, of human suffering? What what brings forth for most people, most of the time, including yourself? When is it mostly when you suffer in your life? This is a great question that came through this morning, uh, and I'd love to hear hear what your uh, opinions are. Let's go to the comments. Good morning, Lynn Ramsey. Good morning, Lynn Ramsey. Tom Shuck. Good morning, brother. Emily Hosmer. Good morning. Jessica Summers. Good morning. Patrick Simmons. One's belief system perception. Good morning. Yeah, I would say that's part of it for sure. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about it as we get in, but that's kind of what I'm going to set today is uh, talking about what is the primary source of human suffering and what can you do about it? Okay. Uh, do you find yourself suffering in your life? Do you feel like you're a victim to your life and everything that's happening in your life? Uh, you know, that happens to a lot of people. And I think it's you know, designed to be that way. It's designed to put us in positions when, uh, you know, where we have to change, right? And that happens. So if, you know, pain is kind of a signal to change. So what I always say is pain is inevitable. I never tell anybody like, uh, you know, you're going to become really healed and you're never going to have pain. No, I mean, that, that's completely opposite in my experience, to be honest. I mean, the more that I heal, the more that there's more challenges come, right? But they're not challenges, they're opportunities. It's just, uh, you know, spirituality isn't about not having issues, you know, not having, you know, what some others may perceive problems. It's about having the tool set, the ability to work through them with joy and ease. That's what it is. So, you know, we live in a world and, you know, this happens to me a lot where people think because I'm a shamanic priest and I help other people heal and all kinds of things like that, like I should be like without, you know, something that needs work, you know, which for the ego mind would call flaw. I don't see flaw. I only see perfection in other beings. So, uh, you know, and people argue with me with that. You know, you're allowed. I have my own way. I see things, I guess, as a, a, as a being of creation, I'm aware that I am creation and you are creation. Our creation is gorgeous and wonderful. The only thing that makes it not so is the judgment of our fallen ego mind. Plain and simple. So people that want to insist on I'm only human and I'm imperfect and all these things, uh, you know, you're hiding behind something. You know, what if everything's just right? Ask yourself that. What if everything is just right? When I think about it, yeah, there you go. When you think about what though? So what's it? What's it? When you think about suffering, it. It's it. What is it? Fear and resistance to what is. Mm -hmm. I'll go there too. Good morning. The belief that a reality is not as it should be. You guys are hitting the nail on the head. I'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. Let me first blow my schnoz. Uh, I wake up in the morning and I have, you know, not too bad, but a little bit. Uh, for those of you that may not know, 
uh, I've recovered from terminal lung disease. And uh, I wouldn't say I'm 100%, but I think I feel like I breathe better than I ever have my whole life. Like I feel like I've had respiratory illness. I remember being very small and having ear infections. I had my tonsils out and I had these swollen lymph nodes that had to be cut out of my neck when I was very young. So like my whole life, I've like suffered with like sinus issues and uh, respiratory illnesses. And then, you know, that eventually led me into having uh, COPD emphysema, uh, which uh, took me down to around 40% lung function. And, uh, you know, it, they told me I was terminal, actually. Uh, like, oh, yeah, you can't recover from this. Well, uh, I definitely have. I mean, people also confuse that too, I think, the difference between, because there is no cure for that. Well, I'm talking about a cure. I'm talking about healing. If you can be 1% better, is that not healing? Right? Look at it that way. If you have something going on in your life, don't rush for the cure. That's the magic bullet. People are looking, I'm looking, I'm racing for the cure. It's not the cure you're looking for. You're looking for the remedy. You're looking for the healing. Healing can come in increments, very small increments. Like my healing for my lungs started to happen in very small increments. Breath work was a big part of that. Uh, a lot of people don't understand that the breath work isn't what healed my lungs so much, is the breath work healed my brain of my brain and my nervous system. So that way I can begin to look at my life in a more beautiful way. But I do have like some extra kind of, I don't know what to say, um, mucus. So uh, I usually have a little bit more than I would say probably the average person, but it's something I'm totally capable of living with. And I think it can even get better from here. So please excuse me. <laughs> okay, horn works. Now let's try the lights. Hmm. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring our hands together in prayer position. I'm going to start here today. Today's the day I feel like we need to get connected and call in source or God or creator, whatever word works for you, because it's not about the word. It's never been about words, anything. Nothing's about words. Our true language is vibration and frequency. So call to you, use that idea and call to you. I call to me the frequency of God or creation or the one living light, however you want to say it. And we call here to us all that is divine and beautiful and pure and loving and healing mm, and balanced and free. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bring that here. And as I bring that into me, I'm taking in a deep breath and I'm picturing, I like to imagine as if a nice downward flow of light starts into my body and I let it come into my body and it kind of scans through and goes all the way down and grounds through me and into the earth through my tailbone and my feet and my legs. And now I'm in this flow state. And this is where it's really important for you to not be afraid to use your imagination. Your imaginative mind is a very, very, very powerful tool. And how I would explain this is, and how it's kind of my understandings, even through the Pakakuna tradition, like what we see here, you know, on this plane of existence, what we're calling reality is manifested light. So these are things that are already have become manifest. They're already here, everything. So like a leaf, I have a little leaf here. So like, here's a leaf, like uh, that's manifested light. It's already been manifested. Uh, and then you can go into other things. Like, so that would be like a natural creation. Then you would have like, say, pen. So this is a design. Where did this come from? This came from the mind of someone that designed this pen. And where did that idea come from? That idea came from unmanifested light, from things that are not yet manifested. So that's a, like kind of a misunderstanding that's happened to us through our childhood, <coughs> which has stopped most of us from allowing our imagination, the ability to create image, to become a powerful tool. It's meant to um, evolve and mature with us. Well, we didn't really get that chance in this society. So what we're doing is I'm creating that way for us to be able to do that. And, you know, the ancients have been doing that for a long time. And what I tell you to do is use your mind's eye, your disciplined imagination. Like it's a dis it's different. It's a disciplined imagination. It's the power of creation, right? You're allowing yourself as you just sit here to create the image in your mind 
in your mind of a downward flow of light. And as that happens, it's so powerful that it can create a vibration inside of you. So if you're willing to imagine this downward flow of light and you can see it, and I can feel how it's moving through me and I can feel its vibration. Now your mind will try to fight you like, is that my imagination? Just let go of that. It's just frequency. You're training frequency into your being, allowing yourself to step into the unmanifested light. And the more we practice this, the more powerful that becomes. It becomes a more and more powerful connection. Your ability then to envision becomes higher. So the better you're capable of envisioning, you can create the vision. That means you know how then to create the frequency or the vibration. And you're doing it all the time. You just don't understand that's happening. You know, say you're worrying about something that's happening. When you're worrying about something that isn't even there yet, you're worrying about a future. Like uh, I have an appointment. I have a doctor's appointment I got to get to and I'm nervous about it because you're sitting there overthinking it. The vibration is in you then. It's not actually there. You've created it and that vibration's there. And what does that do? That can attract to you other like vibrations. So manifestation kind of works the same way or the life you want or what do you want to happen? I mean, and that's a big deal. That's actually a big question for most people is what is it that I really want? Hmm. And you know, that's a great question for that subconscious mind. What is it that I really want? And you kind of let that go. And whatever it is that you want, whatever it is you want to manifest, you know, and for I think for a lot of people, it's manifesting abundance. The first thing is, is not limiting abundance to just money. OK, that's not just that's not what all abundance is. When I personally, everybody might have a different vision. When I personally a picture of what abundance is, I picture a lush green hills and earth that are full of food and life. Ooh, that's a big level of abundance. And then what I'm doing is that abundance, it's the picture and it's not the picture, it's the vibration within me. What does that abundance look like? Because, you know, you can look at like some people, they look at abundance as only money, right? That's kind of a limitation because that's one way of seeing it. And you could do that too. What would it look like? a picture in your mind, what does it look like for you to have the abundance you desire? What does it look like? Create the vision. And then as you consume the vision, you're taking the vision in, you're bringing your awareness to the vibration, to the frequency. All right. And this takes practice. This isn't something you just turn on because this is something that hasn't really been used in our neurological cycles. That's why I teach things this way. I teach things in a very uh, uh, strict way, in a, in a sense, of connecting to the neurological systems of our being. Because this is what creates here. It's got the ability to create. We're made in the image of the creator, okay? And in a deeper meaning, we are the creator, right? We just forget because we have this fun thing called the ego mind, and it likes to start problems because it doesn't really have anything it's focused on doing or creating. We can begin to bring focus and balance into our ego mind by manifestation or bringing light and vibration into the body. This brings actual things for the ego mind to connect with and potentially create. Your ego is your amigo if you use it properly because it's a tool. It's really just a tool. Mm hmm. Good morning, Brandon. Good morning, Tom. All right. So now we called in our spirit, what we're going to do and go ahead, call in your guides. I call in all guides and energy. The thing is, is this is all intention. Lots of people make spiritual connection and spiritual communication this way too serious of thing. That's not how it works. Spirit isn't too serious at all, to be honest. When we work with them, we want to create it as sacred play. We want to make it like play is what it is because spirit don't have ego minds and they're not worried about anything. They're not worried about if they have enough money, if people like them, if there's enough time in the day, you know, so on and so forth. You know, the things that we may worry about. What do you worry about? You know, what are you placing your attention and worry into? You know, they don't worry about that. So we can let go. And that's what this is for. It's just for now. That's that thing that human beings we lose as we grow older is the ability to play. So make this, at the minimum for yourself, something you can do to play, playtime. 
Okay. And then what I want you to do is, is I want you to begin to breathe. I want you to take that breath deep into your belly. And up into your chest and head and out with a soft sigh. And you're relaxing the body on your exhale. And you fill up from your belly, your chest, your head. And exhale. Relax the body. And then you do it again. Mm -hmm. Continue. Inviting the beauty and power of the breath. Invite it in. Pull it in. Just relaxing with the breath. <sighs> Filling up your belly and then your chest like a wave. <sighs> Getting high on our own supply. Five more. Four more. Strong breath. So good. Three more. Two more. Last breath. Fully in and hold. Hold your breath, and then we're going to release and hold, release, <laughs> hold. Three, two, one, inhale. Hold. Just hold your breath. Place your tongue in contact with the roof of your mouth. And release. Your eyes are closed. You're dropping into your body. Bring your awareness back to your downward flow of light. In our tradition, this is a form of a teaching I do in my shamanic classes called Salman Chukui. This is just a more simplified kind of version and a good place for anyone to start. Just allowing that flow of light. You're asking, you're inviting, whatever word you want to use. You're giving permission for this light to flow through your body. And as it flows through your body, you're allowing anything that feels heavy, stuck or stagnant to begin to just vaporize, atomize, float away as if it's floating downstream. And you're just feeding that stream into the earth. You're grounding yourself to the earth. And if you want some guidance to ground, again, you're using that disciplined imagination. I like to picture, I like to imagine, and you can do anything you want, from the navel down becomes like the very roots of the tree, like where you see the base of the tree and where it disappears into the earth or the grass. That's what that is, like from my navel down. And it becomes a root system into the earth. And I imagine and feel that I'm connected deep into all the root systems of the earth and the mycelium of the earth and all the trees and energies and able to communicate with them. I love to spend some time there and actually exploring that, exploring. And I like to do it when I'm outside sometimes and see if I can feel and begin to uh, connect with a tree. 
connect with a flower or a plant through your feet, through your legs. You're very capable of doing those things, but you must train first. Opening up. What we're doing is we're essentially opening up a flow of neurological light or energy. Your nervous system, that's how it works. It's shooting around waves of light, you know, neural synapses, synaptic uh, activity. This is what's causing all, all of your sensations that happen. Mm -hmm. So I'm in that flow of light. I'm connected to the earth and I'm allowing anything that feels heavy. So if I have guilt, if there's something that's on your mind, it's heavy and bothering you for now, just open your grip open and let it go. Let it flow. You'll be amazed at how much a lot of the things that we face in our life isn't really the problem. It's how we're reacting to it. And that reaction is directly in proportion to our energy and what's happening in the reactions of our energy field. So even if you're having a problem or you're worried about something, you can begin to do this flow pattern of light, do a little breath, and all of a sudden it just starts to take that upper edge off, that heaviness away. And now instead of reacting and that parasympathetic nervous system isn't engaged and you're in sympathetic dominance, moving into parasympathetic dominance, now you can respond. These are fantastic tools. These are great ancient tools that have been handed down to us. Our breath and our ability to draw light or even have imagination. These are beautiful things that we can use to help us. We're going to do another round of breath. We're going to do a double breath this time. Two sniffs. Sigh out. And I'm actually going to modify this first. We're going to take in a big sniff into the belly. And then a sharp sniff into the chest and head. And then out. Another key is, if you want to, you can use eye movement. So some of you may have heard of like EMDR. Okay, that's eye movement uh, desensitization reprogramming. Uh, so the way your eyes move in your head, you got to remember your eyes are directly connected to your brain. So moving your eyes around can affect how the brain's working and how uh, you're transmitting energy. So a lot of people have asked me, I notice sometimes when you breathe, I can see the whites of your eyes, like your eyes roll back in your head. And that actually scares some people. So my apologies, I don't mean to scare anyone. It's just the way the energy is moving in my body. I often at the beginning, the inception of my inhale, my eyes are looking down in my skull. And as I breathe and pull up to the top of my head, my eyes come up to where all the energy is at the top of my head. And then I release, it comes back down. So my recommendation is if you're comfortable trying that, use this eye pattern. Okay. It really works. It really helps everything kind of move. And you'll feel all this sensation in your head because your eyes, the muscles of your eyes, all this stuff is connected to your neurology. It's very, very powerful. All right. So we're going to begin. I want you to let all the air out of your lungs. And we're going to begin to breathe. Two sniffs. Belly, chest, head, and out. Nice sigh. And as you sigh, let everything drop. Let that light drop. Belly, chest head, eyes, belly, chest head, feels amazing, belly, chest head, oxygenating the body, five more, give it all you got, four, Three, two, last one. We're going to hold it at the top. Hold, squeeze into the center of your head. Squeeze into the middle, that third eye, your pineal gland. Three, two, one, release. Picturing your third eye, it opens. It opens. And imagine, even though your eyes are closed, your eyes are closed now. Imagine what the room looks like around you. 
Don't open your eyes. Just imagine. It doesn't have to be accurate to what your visual eyes see. Just imagine you can see the room you're in. Just take a few moments, keeping your tongue in contact with the roof of your mouth as you slowly breathe in and out through your nose. Can you see the room around you with your eyes closed? And when I mean see, can you feel its vibration? This is where spiritual vision is far different than physical vision. Spiritual vision isn't something you do. It's something you receive. Okay? So I'm receiving. Begin to receive the room around you. I'm receiving. I'm open to receive. You're even allowing yourself to be open. And you can bring that awareness down into your entire body. Hold your hands up. Can you feel the vibration of the room? Can you feel the energy that surrounds you? Feel. Become aware of your body, its sensations. Become aware of the room and its sensations. Any sounds off in the distance. Good. Very good. Let's do one more round. Wow. Mm, very powerful group we have this morning. Thank you all. It's together is how we create this magic. And I'm sure plenty of you can feel all that light that's coming in. Bring your awareness back. Close your eyes and just bring yourself back to that awareness before we begin breathing again of that downward flow of light and invite it in. And you can now invite anything you want to go to go. So if you have illness or disease or you feel like there's blockage somewhere in your column, maybe you're holding some emotion in your tummy, Maybe you're holding some blockage down low in your sacrum. I definitely feel somebody's got a blockage happening in the left shoulder. Somebody's got pain or tightness in the left shoulder. What you can do is you can bring your awareness there. Because wherever your awareness, wherever your attention goes, energy and light flows. So wherever it is in your body that feels like it needs more attention, take a moment and just bring your awareness there. And picture this beautiful, harmonious, heavenly light. And what it's doing is it's bringing healing. It's helping to take apart the heavy energy that creates the symptoms. I release control. And surrender to... <laughs> And surrender to the flow of love that will heal me. This is a chant in a song that I just love. Very angelic voice. In your mind, say that for a moment. I release control and surrender to the flow of love that will heal me. I release control and surrender to the flow of love that will heal me. I release control and surrender to the flow of love that will heal me. Beautiful. This is beautiful energy work, and you can do this anytime. And your intention is, is anything that feels heavy or sick or destructive or broken or stiff or thick or mucky or yucky, any word that pops up that feels like something that's not in alignment with your happiest self. Allow that to begin to move and send it to the earth. And you're lovingly going to give it to the earth. Give it to Mama Gaia, to Mother Earth, for her, our heavy energy, which is condensed light. It's light. It's just condensed. It's too heavy for us to use. It's perfect for her. 
for her it's sweet chocolate a beautiful beautiful dish mm, it's the most beautiful thing we could give the earth this helps us to also create a connection with nature with mother earth we're not on the earth we are the earth every cell in our bodies is made up of an element of this planet Okay, so you're inhabiting, you're a spirit that's inhabiting a life form of Mother Earth. So in this form, you are the Earth. Give to the Mother. Let her have what you no longer need. And as you're in that flow, let's use our breath and let's illuminate our body. Okay, we're going to do three sniffs this time. The first sniff is going to go from the tailbone to the navel. <laughs> from the navel to the throat and then from the throat or like collarbone area from here to the top of the head and then a sigh down and as i sigh down i'm letting that flow go through me so first what i'm doing is i'm building up a column of light and then i drop it down wow that feels great column of light I'm using my breath to fill up light and then letting it down almost as if you flushed a toilet you're just whoosh, letting the flush that's beautiful Breathing as powerfully as you can now. We're almost there. Use your eyes if you like. Five more. Four more. Three more, big as you can, tailbone to scalp. Two more. Last one, all the way up and hold it. Hold, squeeze now from your tailbone up through your belly, up through your chest. You're squeezing up to the top. Hold it. And then three, two, one, flush. <laughs> mm, I release control and surrender to the flow of love that will heal me. Mm, I release control and surrender to the flow of love that will heal me. Wonderful, right? Hmm. And that, my brothers and sisters, friends, family, mm. that's how you can start your day. Just You can speed that up. It doesn't have to take as long because I was instructing and telling and speaking. But it's a daily practice. If you practice this every day, I guarantee you, you will begin to see big changes in your life. Big changes. Because it's going to keep that energy field clean and flowing. Okay? We are beings of energy. That's what we are. We're beings of light and information. The only time that we really have issues is when we clog up that flow. And it's not that we're doing anything wrong. We just don't know. We don't know. I didn't, I didn't grow up with a shaman that lived next door to me or could show up on a computer uh, to help me understand the flow of energy in my body. So it's really beautiful that we have these beautiful tools now at our disposal and that's really, in the long run, is going to be a big thing and has been a big thing in helping open consciousness, all right? We just have to accept that everyone is on their own part of their journey, okay? Not thinking that anyone's wrong or broken. Uh, that was the kind of a mistake I made early, um, you know, which I don't really believe in mistakes. It was one of the steps I went through early in my shamanic uh, journey and priesthood was uh, because of my sensitivity, I could see how everyone suffers. So I was looking at the world and people as if they're broken. Look at all these broken people. 
So that, that creates a mindset of separation, really. So what I know now and how my understanding works now is, is that nobody's broken. We just maybe bent. And that's not bad. It's just how it has to be. Some people have to suffer. Suffering has to happen. I'm one of them. Suffering had to occur for me to awaken, for me to illuminate. So there are no mistakes. And this brings us back to the beginning. The beginning. When I talked about what is the primary cause of human suffering? And we had some really good answers that come about that. And if you just are in here now, and I would like to hear your answer, or even if you put one up already, maybe your channel has opened and you have even a more clear response. What in your estimation uh, is the um, greatest driver of human suffering? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Good morning, Brianna. Let's see. Tom said the kitty was attracted to the energy and just had to come up and stare at the computer screen. Aw. I love kitty cats. I love my cats. I didn't like cats at all until Mary introduced me. But, you know, she's Mary Critters, and she's taught me lots of stuff. That would be my left shoulder from Jim Tuesday. Good, Tom. Bring your awareness there. You have all the power to bring healing and recovery into any part of your body. You just have to believe. It's faith. It's the same thing Jesus told us, same things that he showed us, you know, and if nobody has yet, I hope you have, and I'll continue to place this out there. If you haven't watched The Chosen, which is a series, there's three um, seasons up and available. It's crowdfunded, you know, by Angel Productions and a guy named Dallas. Jenkins. Dallas Jenkins is the director. And these it depicts, it shows the, a story of the time of Jesus and the disciples. But the cool part is, is it's not really religious. It shows it more from a viewpoint of if you were there. And then it's really neat because then all of the disciples end up having like uh, personalities and things. So it creates a different kind of relationship than anything taught in a religious sense. And then it also brings us closer into the teachings of Yeshua, the teachings of Jesus, right? Because that's what his teachings were. Uh, in one of the episodes, a woman who uh, they deemed unclean, she had some sort of illness where she was bleeding from her um, reproductive area. And uh, that that where they lived, they shunned her from the city. And she's just a woman and she had an issue and she lost all of her money and riches trying to be cured by doctors. Doesn't that sound familiar? Uh, she lost herself trying to be cured by doctors, but she knew, she believed that she, if she even just touched the tassel, the prayer tassel on Jesus' garment, she would be healed. That's how strong her faith was her faith. And while Jesus was walking through a crowded uh, area of town, this woman was able to jump out from the people. And all she did was barely get her fingers on the prayer tassel that was hanging from his garment. And it took some of his energy and he could feel it. And then he turned around and, uh, you know, some other things happened. And then he talked to her and he was like, how, what made you believe? Like, well, how did you know by touching my garment? And she was like, uh, forget how she worded it, but what he pointed out to her is like, it wasn't my garment. It was your faith. <laughs> and that's, <laughs> that's got me very emotional right now because I understand it's my faith. And it's not, the, it's not the faith that's been like drilled into us in forms of religion. It's faith. It's knowing that you are one with the universe and healing is available to you. And all you have to do is be open to receive it. Faith. I believe. I believe I can heal. Since I believed I could heal, I did. And I still do. I'm still healing. I'm healing emotionally every day. You know, it's not something I seek. I'm not, I'm not telling you to go out and seek to heal all the time. That can become an addiction. And I know people who are addicted to healing. Don't be addicted to it. Just be open to choose to connect with it but it's faith it's your faith and faith means what you believe believe in your core and in your heart do you believe you're worthy to have a happy life do you believe that you're worthy to live without fear anger rage non-forgiveness and resentment do you believe you're worthy i believe you are we've been forgiven already 
Beautiful. That's beautiful. But it's faith. And so that brings us back to um, what we were talking about in the beginning. Okay. We were talking about what brings human suffering. Uh, Tom asks, what platform is The Chosen on? It's on its own platform because it's crowdfunded. That's what makes this so awesome, okay? Because it's not Hollywood. This isn't Hollywood. This is actually, and what I would tell you is, is Jesus is a spirit, okay? Jesus is a spirit. Christ is a frequency of consciousness, okay? Jesus came here and inhabited a man, Okay, the spirit, like how you're a spirit inhabiting or a man or a woman, your spirit, you're not a body, your spirit, his spirit came and what it was is as it came into this body and it developed into an adult, it became aware that it's source. This is Christ, the consciousness, it's a frequency of consciousness, his Christ was turned on for the people who are remembering, they are Christ too, they're awakening. And Jesus even said in that time, like what he's doing is creating a pathway. He's opening up a gate. And for us, that looks like time. Forget about time. Focus on now. Jesus is teaching the spirit of Jesus and many others, not just Jesus, Buddha, Krishna. These teachings are still here. The energy is here. It's meant to be absorbed, felt, and radiated faith that's what it's meant to do but the chosen is on its own platform tom because it's crowdfunded okay this is the biggest crowdfunded thing that's ever happened and it's amazing so uh just google it and check it out <sighs> let's see faith says blocks from love when we live in love for ourselves and others we flow through indeed okay so we're going to go back to the original question what is the primary source of human suffering? And the answer is very simple, disagreement with reality. So let that sink in for a minute. The only time I really suffer is when I disagree with reality. Now, this even can apply often to physical pain. Because often when I help people with physical pain, it's not just the sensation of the body, it's the mind. The mind is creating an emotional reaction. What most people are totally unaware of is physical pain often is associated with emotional distress. Okay? Disagreement. But we're just going to go in just general suffering. When you, you, my life sucks and it's so hard and the way people are and the world and all these things, that's disagreement with what is. Okay? What is? All right? Whatever is here and happen right now is happening right now is what is. So what doesn't make sense is how we're always disagreeing with that or what's happened, the events that's happened. People say all the time, you know, and they do these illusory things. I used to do them. Uh, you know, what, what if I knew then what I know now? Well, then I'd never get here. See? So the thing is, is understanding that what happens is exactly what needs to happen. And you can begin to train yourself doing these things by saying things to your mind and repeating it because it's repetition. Repetition is how we programmed. Repetition is how we reprogram, right? What if you could look at everything as this is just how it needs to be in this moment? This doesn't mean I don't look for change or try to change the next coming event. You can, but what you don't want to do is disagree with what is, you know, like I used to disagree with my upbringing and my childhood. I thought it was terrible, right? It's just the most worst thing that should ever happen. A child should never have to go through these things. I spent most of my life, I mean, and this is going to sound harsh. I spent most of my life wishing my mother didn't give birth to me. It felt so bad. And that's what I would say to uh, to others even. Uh, I used to be a proponent of abortion. I'd be like, yes, abortion is necessary because if I had my choice, I would have been aborted. Nobody should have to grow up the way I grew up is what my mind said to me. I couldn't see that it was necessary. Necessary. Everything's necessary. And we also have soul contracts that we're unaware of because no one tells us about them. If you were from your time, you're a little kid and someone helped you understand that everything that shows up is okay the way it is. Okay. And you're going to have some challenges in your life. You're going to have some obstacles, which are actually opportunities for you to grow. Because when we know that we can grow from it, 
when we don't know that, we suppress it. It's not my fault how I feel. That's another big thing. I have people all the time blame me for how they feel. Blaming me for how they feel. What you said makes me uncomfortable. Okay. So you're saying I have control over the actions of your physical body? No. It's a choice. We have a choice. We have a choice to how we respond to everything. Disagreement with what is. You will never suffer if you disagree, if you don't disagree. And this brings us into something that's my favorite tool, acceptance. Acceptance. What is acceptance, right? Acceptance. I'm able to accept. I'm able to accept things as they are. It doesn't mean that sometimes I don't forget and I don't accept, but it doesn't last long. I remember right away. I must accept this reality as it is, right? It doesn't mean you're going to like everything, right? But disagreeing with it only disempowers you. So say something happens, say you get a flat tire. Oh, here's a better example. This morning, uh, I'll tell one about my own personal experience, just one I had this morning. Uh, I drove my daughter to school and she gets out of the car and we have a good morning and I go drive and I'm almost halfway back home and my phone rings and it's the school. And I'm like, oh crap, what's going on? And I answer the phone and it's my daughter. She's like, um, is my phone in the car? Uh, I left it there and I look over and it's in the door. And, you know, an old version of me would be like, this is inconveniencing. I have to get home. I have to get on my live stream and oh, starts to worry and disagree with reality. Not this time. And I told you guys about a story I had the other day where a drink spilled over into my lap in the car, something that totally would have triggered me before. And I had no response, like no heavy response. I just started laughing because it was joyous to me that I could see what it was teaching me. The, the, the teaching was is to pay, look, everything's okay. Ah, I see, I see. Same thing with the phone this morning. It was like, it was another thing. I could have complained, like, come on, man, what are you doing that for? I got, you know, I could have got upset about it in some way. But the first thing it came to is like, well, this is on purpose. So I spun around and I drove back. And as I drove back, I saw a family of deer, these beautiful deer. And, you know, I like to read energy and I could see all their energy and their love for each other and their sweetness. And it was like, oh, well, that was all worth it. I got to turn around and then get to pull up. And then my daughter comes out and she can see me and see that I'm happy and uh, there with her with her phone. And she's happy too, you know, because when someone does something like that, like I'm sure her for her first reaction was thinking, ooh, he might be upset with me because he's got to turn around and come back. And I know he's got stuff he's got to do, you know. And I could tell by the way she was on the phone. She was a little bit like, oh, I need it. Sorry. Like, hey, it's totally okay, you know. So what it is, is I just, I'm choosing all the time, more and more, I keep reprogramming my mind to accept each moment as if I've chosen it. I accept. I accept. And then you don't have to worry about being upset. You don't have to talk yourself out of being upset or being mad. You just accept, right? Tom says, when things happen, I tell myself I'm not even mad. Go a step above that. I accept it as if I've chosen it. It's here for me. Replace it with, well, I'm not even mad. Well, now you're creating the potential to even be mad. Let's even just leave that alone. I accept each moment as if I've chosen it. I accept. I accept that whatever this is, is here to show me. And when you do that, now you're open to receive the lesson that's within it. Because every perceived negative, everything you ever complain about, everything you've ever complained and complain about has medicine in it if you're honest and open with yourself of what it's showing you about you. What is it showing me? And what is it showing me about me? What is it showing me about my reactions and all those things? I've come from a very highly reactive mind. I could get pissed off about anything before. Now I don't I hardly ever get pissed. And when I do, it's very short, very short. Because I realize if I'm pissed off, it's because I'm suffering because I'm not agreeing with my reality. Should be some other way. Think about how much time you spend disagreeing with reality. Take a moment and then be gentle with yourself. One, Because that's the thing. Once you really realize how much your thoughts are what's bringing suffering to you, a big reaction typically is, is to create self-hatred, to create anger with the self. 
let go. Accept. It's how it is. Now it's time for me to pay attention. And if you've never paid attention to that before, it's okay. Forgive yourself. The thing is, is you don't know what you don't know. I didn't know. I had no one to tell me what I'm telling you right now. The information I'm giving you is ancient technology that has been known by the uh, ancient civilizations, the seers, shamans, sages of the planet, the medicine people of the planet since its dawn. Okay. It's always been here. Just nobody's telling me. Nobody's telling you. And if the information isn't there, it's really hard for us to be able to adapt. Adaptation. Okay. That's a beautiful word. Adaptation. We are the most adaptable species on this planet. Boy, can we adapt. Okay. We can adapt to pretty much anything, but we're not using that. We actually have designed societies where we seek comfort. And comfort is the opposite of adaptation. Comfort is not the ability to adapt. I'm not saying you shouldn't ever be comfortable. Spend some time there. Enjoy it. You're here to enjoy, but don't seek it. Don't think if you're uncomfortable, there's something wrong with your life. There isn't. In that uncomfort is your freedom. Your freedom. On the other side of fear is freedom. You have everything you need to be anything you want. And if you disagree with that, start training yourself to see that truth. I have everything I need to be anything I want. Now open up your imagination. Use it. Use your breath. <sighs> what do I want to be? <sighs> Who do I want to be? <sighs> make that decision. And what decisions can I make that put me in alignment to be that, to have that, to do that? <sighs> what is it that I want? <sighs> And for me, the, the answer is I want to love. I spent so much of my life sheltered, covered in fear that I couldn't love other people because I couldn't love me. Now I'm open and I love. I'm here because I love you. Yes, you. You. I love you because you're me and I'm you. I love thy neighbor as I love thyself. I love you. That's why I'm here, right? And I'm also here to love and to be loved. For the people that love me to love me. For those that don't know me yet, I feel their love too because I'm open already to receive it. We're here to love. That's what I'm here for. Now, you may have a different answer within you, and that's okay. Start there. Start there because sometimes it's just figuring out what is it that I really want? What's important to me and what do I value? really at the deepest parts. Because when you sit there and you close your eyes and you breathe and you just let go of thinking for a little while and you ask that question, you're opening yourself up to the possibility of your higher mind to bring you a new answer, a new pattern of thought. Because thoughts are energy forms that we connect to via our vibration. I personally see it and experience it is almost like Spider-Man's webs. Your vibration sends out these lines that are like a web and bring thoughts to you, files, form. But if you change the way you vibrate, what you're shooting your web at changes. And then you're, oh, I'm releasing all of the, the, the thinking, the incessant thought. And I'm just asking the question, mm, what's important to me and what do I really want? What do I really need? Because when you find that answer, now you can apply your true attention there and you start to fulfill your purpose. This doesn't mean that what you first envision as what it is I really need and what's important is the end. It's the beginning. Okay. Beginning. What is that I really need now? And for some people, that's I need to feel safe. I don't feel safe. My life feels scary to me. All right. Lots of people feel that way. Mine feels that way sometimes. And then I realize, well, if I sit here and disagree with it and think about how scary it is, I'm giving more energy to that because wherever your attention goes, your energy flows. So then what you can do is start my favorite thing to do that changes everything, gratitude. Gratitude, in my estimation, is very close to one of the most powerful frequencies that we have 
for transformation, for growth. And it leads us into a deep understanding of truly what love is. Because many of us, and we don't, wouldn't want to admit it, don't really know what love is. We have ideas of what love is, what's been implanted or grafted upon us from society. Like, you know, romantic love, familial love. I only love these people. Love, true love, is an unconditional thing, and it's not, it's beyond words. It doesn't have language. That's why it can't really be explained. It's a feeling. I feel love. You can enjoy it. You can grab that to you. But I couldn't feel love before because first I had to feel gratitude. If I don't have two things, acceptance and gratitude, I can't love you and I can't forgive you. And I can't love me and I can't forgive me because I don't accept it. I don't accept myself and I don't accept you. Do you see? Acceptance. And I accept everything as if I've chosen it because I have because we are creation itself. Do you see how this all rolls together? You just got to start in that one. It's a cycle. So we get trapped in thought cycles, cycles of behavior. Pick one thing to break the cycle, just words. And that's what I tell people. Affirmations and stuff aren't just for what you don't want to actually re rely on them to help you when you're in trouble. I mean, they work there. But the real thing is, is to practice them when you're not in trouble, when you're in still mind. I accept my reality, however it shows up. That's look at that just saying that to yourself i accept whatever shows up i'm not going to try to uh use i'm not going to try to use some other way uh -huh. and that's what we're here to do and as we do that you adapt you adapt to what is now you're no longer in disagreement i'm open for questions i want to hear some comments i know that's been a lot of information i can feel the channel coming through and if that channel's coming through me it means it's coming through you because i'm you mm -hmm. i'm i am i'm you and you're me i mean maybe you're better looking than me but that's okay <laughs> all right you're me and i'm you all is one that's one of the teachings I teach people, and it's hard to grasp. It was for me uh, when I was in earlier stages of my awakening is when spirit was telling me that everything is one. I'm like, what? I feel separate. Why do you feel separate? Oh, that's a good question. Why do you feel separate from everything? Mm. See, that's a good question and uh, one you could ask yourself. Great questions. Ask yourself questions. And when you ask yourself questions, don't think about them. Don't sit there and ponder the answer. Ask the question and let it float. You'll be surprised what happens. Your subconscious mind, your higher self, your spiritual guidance, these all mean the same thing to me, can bring you an answer. All right? I don't care what terms you use. You're asking the cosmos, not the incessant thinking ego mind that only knows its past. This mind, the thing we're usually thinking from, and observing our reality from only can recycle its past. And that is why it's in fear. Because it's relating, it's trying to create patterns of survival based on past experiences. But what this does often is blocks us from our actual present experience. How is everything right now? That's what I want to ask you. Just right now, not in the world, not because you watch the news, none of those things. Right now in this moment, I want you to pay attention to how you feel, okay? Close your eyes. Take in a slow, deep breath. And release it. And just relax. Let your breath go where it wants. And I want you just to feel. Feel your body. The sensations of your body. Can you become aware of the vibration in your body? Can you feel the blood flowing through your veins? And what I want you to notice and remind yourself is, I'm safe already. Say that. I'm safe already. I'm safe already. So you're telling your mind that it doesn't have to search for safety. I'm safe already. One of my favorite questions, am I safe? Yes, and I'm safe already. There's nothing attacking me. I'm under control right now. And then this can give you a little bit of space for you to start to look at your emotions and what you're disagreeing to. 
Maybe there's somebody that's sick in your reality and you know that they're not going to live much longer. You could disagree. This is terrible. This and that. Or you can be loving and accepting. Like I see that's how it is. And by you giving that loving acceptance, you can actually help them to do one of two things. I believe that there is no such thing as non-recovery. All right. I believe even that if you died, you could be brought back into your body. I believe that. Okay. I don't know if we're there yet energetically. But I do know that we're to a point where we can facilitate healing for each other with our intentions, with energy, with light. Mm -hmm. And that means even with yourself. Mm. There's a good one. William's always here, by the way. William used to say, adapt or die. Well, that's true. That's how that works. You'll, I put it more like adapt or suffer. Because the truth is, is you're never going to die. That's the truth. So that's kind of a word that I don't use. And I'm not a goonie. Well, I'm a nice goonie. You know, goonies never say die. Um, but yeah, uh, die is not something that's a reality for me anymore. Um, you know, for other people, it may be uh, due to their program, due to what they're agreeing to, the limitations they're agreeing to. Uh, this makes some people who are very distraught and uh, emotionally driven uh, kind of afraid because that sounds goofy to them to let go of that. We even live in a society that if you're not upset enough, someone may judge you. You know, uh, I just lost someone, which I don't want to say lost either. I just gained a, a guide. I just had someone who was very close to me, like a father to me, leave his body just a few weeks ago. And, you know, pre-awakening, that would have been a devastating thing to me that may even could have sent me into a, a deep depression or pain. Um, but you know, I, I knew he was sick and I knew that he wasn't going to survive. I could see that already. Uh, I tried to help him heal. Uh, he just wasn't on that frequency to receive. Um, and then, you know, that's painful too, because when you love someone and you know, you can help them, but they don't have faith, there's nothing you can really do because it's faith. It takes faith. I can't help you unless you believe that I can or that you can. If you believe that you can help yourself, then I can help you to see that. And if you don't believe in yourself, then I ask you then to believe in me. Believe that I can help you because I can. I can help you to believe in you. If you believe in me, that helps me to help you believe in you. Do you see how that works? We're all interconnected. No one is above nor below each other. There, I don't care if you're the CEO of a company or the janitor of a school. You are equally important of this place. Each thing, each being each cell and atom of this reality is believe is so close is is all interconnected mm -hmm. interconnected interconnectedness oneness now, that doesn't mean you're not supposed to have an individual uh, experience that's why we're here and how i like to explain it is like fingers on the hand so let's just use simple terms god is this hand each one of these fingers is us is you me jessica josiah faith tom every time uh, everybody in in the world but you know there's eight billion of them okay fingers in each finger if i take these fingers and i put them on my chest each finger is having a different experience of reality because they're all having a different point of perception however what is that? It all is connected into the one. One. Okay. We're meant to be, I call these the hands of God. We are the hands of God, the hands of creation. Each one of us representing one piece, but not separate from. Because there's lots of people. The wording can be very difficult for some people. Because there's some people like, well, there's God in us all. When you say that, you're actually saying, I'm separate. Well, there's some God in me, but I'm not of God. I'm not God. Well, that's not true. And if you have that kind of limit, that's going to bring limitations to your mind and everything that's doing, you know, all is the worst, most evil being that you could imagine on the planet is also the same creation as you are. The only thing that creates separation is the ego mind. And by condemning people, sensing people to death, doing these things that create more separation, this isn't how we're going to succeed as society. We're going to, by first healing the self, bringing acceptance into the self. If I can accept 
If I can accept me, then I can accept you without resistance. So is there parts of you you're not accepting? Pay attention to those. That's what shadow work is. Bringing the parts of you that you do not accept up to the surface and bringing them in for rectification, releasing the ideas that I'm not good enough or I'm not worthy or there's something wrong with me. Let those things go. That's not true. You're having an experience. And whatever experiencing you're having, you can choose right now how that's going to go for you. Because you guess what? And this drives people nuts that love to be trapped in their um, trapped in their identification with the illusory self. You and nobody is under under any obligation to be who they were five minutes ago. You are here to adapt and evolve. And that means change. That means being open to change. As new information shows up, you can change. I'm open to change. I consistently change. And that's why I giggle when people try to bring up a past version of me. Sorry, I don't live there. You do. And I'm in, I, am, I am not obligated to be who I was five minutes ago. I want to change. And I watch everything that's happened and I make changes as it happens. Some of you have known me for a long time. Some of you have known me long before I was this version of me. Many versions, many versions, and there'll be many more because I am open to adapt. I adapt. I want to adapt. I want to learn more. I like how cold water, the cold water taught me how to adapt, adapt to fear and response. Because if I'm willing to get cold for a few minutes, that means I can handle anything. Because getting cold is a difficult thing for someone who's conditioned to be warm. Most people who never did a cold shower and you say, hey, you ever tried taking a cold shower? They say, well, not on purpose. A uh, hot water tank broke once. And I, no, I mean like on purpose. Have you ever like just turned to full cold water and get in there and <sighs> accept it for a couple minutes? You ever do that? They're like, no, I hate the cold. I'm like, okay, well, there's a good place to start and get you starting into your adaptation. <laughs> Death card tarot. I believe in you, dude. Hey, thank you so much. I believe in you. Uh, what do you define as faith? Uh, so, okay, so that's uh, another kind of one of those things that uh, is kind of beyond language. So I, I would tell you that language is a limit, okay? Faith. Faith at the deepest level is knowing. I know. Like, so it's not something I believe, you know, so like that's where I ha I have a big difference between believe and faith. Believe means I have this information and I agree for it to be true, but I don't actually experience it that way. Whereas faith is I experience I experience the the creator. I experience light. So for me, that's faith. I have faith that everything's going to be just as it needs to be because I have faith. I know I feel within me that everything is the way it needs to be. It's not some other way right? That's faith. True belief. Not just, I think. That's where this gets watered down a lot, especially in this time, because we live in a time, and you'll hear me say this a lot, knowledge. I mean, I remember growing up, they told me knowledge is power. So I would always try to feed my human intellect, read as much information as I can and take in all that information. And then I can use that to regurgitate the information really, really quick. And then that way you think I'm smart. OK, but that's not power. Knowledge isn't power. That's not our true intelligence. Our true intelligence is in our ability to recall information. Our true intelligence is far beyond that. OK, but that requires us to go beyond the incessant thinking mind, the ego based part of our mind. This is why I train people breath work. Breath is the primary foundation for us to gain control of our brain so that way we can just for little points in time, step out of this identified self, which is illusory. Because whoever you think you are, you made it up, all right? And that's probably going to be scary to you. For some people, that's scary. <gasps> I don't know who I am. We're everything. The character you're playing is a choice. I choose my character. I used to play different characters, many different characters. And I'm going to play many after here. The character is di in direct proportion to the experience. I experience a loving, beautiful life. There's times where things happen in my reality that trigger imprints, that trigger the society that was grafted upon me. 
But then instead of me sloughing it off, blaming it on the world, someone else, uh, you're making me mad. I have anxiety because of this. Uh, uh, I wish I had a different job, but I can't leave. Uh, you know, all these things, all these lies, I stopped lying to myself. I started opening up and understanding that anything's possible, but that takes practice. Faith only happens through practice. Faith is only going to happen by us openly releasing the character in which you're playing. Because let's say jo Josiah, I would say, who is Josiah Hall? Mm -hmm. And who you think Josiah Hall is, is not the same thing that the person standing next to you thinks that is. And the person next to them, and your mother, and your father, and your friends, and your family. Each person perceives you in a different way because you're a character in their story, just like you're a character in yours. So what are your perceptions about yourself? How do you see yourself? How do you look at yourself? And does that feel good, right? That's the character we play. We have a chosen character. The cool part is, is as you become more aware of this, you can start changing the way you think and moving from disempowerment to empowerment. And as you empower yourself, oh, that starts to radiate from you and starts to create empowerment in others around you. People that also are on a path of being empowered, they want to be around other empowered people. I love being around other empowered people. They teach me so much, as do unempowered people. When I watch unempowered people, they're showing me how I can potentially help someone else by watching their behavior. Mm -hmm. Or something I could say or teach into the world that can change that behavior. Right? I open myself up to source for it to talk to me. So define as faith. I don't know. I'm not going to give a definition. I don't have one because those are just words. Words aren't a definition. It's a feeling. Faith is a frequency of consciousness. Okay. It's when I know like how that woman knew beyond a shadow of a doubt. It wasn't, well, if I touch his garment, you know, if I touch Jesus's garment, maybe it, I should be healed. That's not how it was. She had faith. She knew in her heart and her being and her soul that if I could just touch him, I'll be healed. Do you see? It's a feeling. So I can't define. All I can do is kind of guide you because, you know, words are just, you know, it's just like how a Christian may hold up the Bible and say, this is the word of God. I'm not going to agree to that. That points to the word of God because the word of God isn't words at all. It's frequency. Just like the guys who wrote the book. The guys, the guys that sat there and penned it, they were channels. God didn't write the book. God or creator gave frequency. The person was channeling these awarenesses and started to write. And it's written in parables and it's written in different ways because it's not meant to be literally taken. The world tries to do that. And that's why most people don't really understand. That's why there's a big fight even in the spiritual community. I see it all the time. People are always, spiritual people are angry about the religious conditioning in which they incurred as a young person. I know I was. So they lash out against religious people. And religious people, most of them have been indoctrinated and uh, put into a place of fear. And they'll protect that. So this creates the fight. A true spiritualist, a true spiritual being understands that all religions are truth, but no one religion is all truth. Okay? Think about that for a second. All religions contain truth. I haven't looked into one. By, by no means am I a spiritual master or, or a religious master either by any chance. I would tell you that I'm a master of energy. I've mastered energy. I feel it. I know it. I sense it. I'm still managing my spirit. But by no means am I someone, I'm not a, 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 a Bible scholar or anything like that. Because most of that stuff's garbage anyways. Because it's not meant to be poured over and thought about with this mind, literally. It's meant to be read and felt. Here, I actually have a, I have something that popped up this morning. Let's talk about this. I love to talk about scripture. You can always bring that here, by the way. If if you're religious and what I'm saying to you is like kind of resonating with you, but also like you're kind of mm, unsure, if you are religious or you like the Bible or you have a, a scripture you'd like to share, share it. And I love to go into those things because what I'll do is I'll open it up. I'll ask channel to come in and we'll open it up into a different perspective. It's always okay. I'm here to help. I'm not here to do anything else except for support you. That's all I want to do. And by me supporting you, that supports me. And that creates a more beautiful world. 
Let me see if I can find this. I saw something this morning on one of my friend's pages, and it was a Bible verse. Here it is. So, and this is also in The Chosen, okay? In The Chosen, there's this scene. There's a scene where there's a big well, and uh, there's more before it before then, but there's a woman at the well, and uh, um, Jesus comes to her, and she's having a really hard time and everything, and, but the, in the scripture, it says this, she's getting water. And he said to her, and, and Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Okay, so this is a parable. This has nothing to do with a well or water. Okay, so whoosh, throw that away right away. It's a parable. It's showing you something. So the well, the well, you know, the way it's coming into me right now, they're showing me the well. That's the information of the planet, the knowledge. Okay, the thing I'm always talking about, the knowledge. If you keep going into the knowledge, you're going to thirst and you're going to need more knowledge. And what do I point out all the time is people, they'll read book after book after book and do seminar after seminar. They're seeking. They're always seeking, right? Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. Right. Okay. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. And this doesn't mean that Jesus gives you a glass of water. That's not, it's not what it means. It means the flow the flow of frequency in the water. And it doesn't mean Jesus. It means Christ or Christic light or light or creation because that water, when you connect to that, you don't need, that's why I always tell people, I don't need books anymore. People are like, did you read this book? Like, no, because they all say the same thing to me. They might be in different words and different languages, but the underlying message is always the same. So I don't need it. And what happens is, is you become the spring. Because we'll never thirst, but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water. I am a fountain of water or a vessel of light, right? Because I'm connected into source. You are too. You just have to awaken that or realize that. Open that up. It's not in a book. I always tell people, they'll ask me, hey, do you got any books you recommend? I'm like, yeah, you. Because you never need a book to awaken. That's someone else's experience. All right. Leave it alone. If you've read a bunch of books, great. You know, they can be sparks. Books sometimes can spark, but they will never create the inner fire. It'll never happen. So that's it. So does that make sense? Is this making sense to you? So let me read it again. Uh, Jesus, in answer to her, Jesus said, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Do you feel that? That's beautiful. Woof. I love that so much. <laughs> let that water, let that water spring from you. Tap into it. It's there. It's waiting for you. And then that brings us back again, circles around back again to the beginning. Acceptance. My brothers, my sisters, now is the time. If you have not found acceptance into your reality yet, begin to work on that. Breathe. Breathe. <laughs> Using your breath begins to loosen up all of the heaviness. It begins to send blood, lymph, and cerebral spinal fluid into your brain. This holy cross. You are this. You have this ability. You're drawing. Imagine your body is the cross. And you're drawing that energy. And you're filling up this vertical column of light. So that may you may have more experience in this horizontal plane of light. All right? You can. You just have to start and it starts here. Start yourself breathing and then start moving into acceptance. Start looking at the things in your life that you're disagreeing with. Stop. Start looking at the things that's happened and start saying, it's okay that that happened. 
and it had to. So what can I take from it? And you can extract the medicine. You can extract that water, that beautiful water from that well, because it's there. You just have to access it. You have to be open and willing to change. Ah, wow. Hour and 20 minutes. I got to get going. I have a, um, a uh, client coming soon, so I got to get ready. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Beautiful. Thank you, Josiah. Beautiful. I love that explanation. Thank you. Uh, I would love to take, and they would love to take credit. Uh, most of the things that come through my mouth when it comes to spirituality and things like that, I channel them. So I have a direct connection. That's what kind of shaman I am. I'm an Alto Masayok Kamaska. Uh, so this means I'm a natural born fourth level being or fourth uh, layer of consciousness teacher. That's what I am. So with that, that means I have a direct connection to source and light. And it's been there my whole life. I just couldn't hear it. But I've always been very sensitive to energy and all kinds of things. And we all are. We all have these beautiful gifts. What I am is I'm not above you in any way. Don't ever think that. Don't think I'm holier than thou. These are ideas that people sometimes graft onto people who are good, great teachers. Then they judge them. You'll judge me by my character. You'll judge me. You'll be trying to find flaw in me. And what I'll tell you is, is don't try to find the flaw in me because any flaw you find in me is a reflection of you. And if you do find flaw in me, take that internally and understand why it is that you don't love yourself. Love me the way I am. I love you the way you are. Okay. Uh, let's see. Death card tarot says 369. I love that. One of my primary guides is Nikola Tesla. Uh, those have deep implications, mostly beyond language. You just nailed it. Thank you. Something I've been trying to explain and understand. Awesome. I'm glad that my channel could bring that through. It was Jesus, by the way. I connect directly with, with a spirit of Yeshua. All right. And that creates fear in lots of people. If you're afraid, I'm sorry. That's just how it shows up for me in my reality. And I believe in it because this spirit, this energy has resurrected me. It's taken me from hell. I, I was in hell. My life was hell for me. Plus, I was dying on top of that and had 25 other symptoms happening all at once. All right. I believe I have faith. I believe, I believe, and I have no problem telling you that Jesus is my savior, just not in the context of religion. I am not a Christian. All right. I don't want you to get that confused either. When I'm sitting here telling you these things, I'm not telling you them from a Christian viewpoint, or at least what a standard, you know, kind of modern Christian idea is. I believe that Christianity is meant to be something totally different than what it's prescribed into the world, is what I would tell you. I'm an omnist, is what I would say. I am of no actual religion. I don't have this one religion, and this is the only truth, and this is how it is. It's not For me, that's not how it works. It's all creation. And I, I feel and know and have the faith that within each religion is truth, but not one of them is all truth. Each one is also, just like you and me, it has parts. It has truth and it has lie. It has both. Where do you place your attention is what matters. Lots of people, they'll look and that's where I was when I was an atheist. All I did was pay attention to the lie. I didn't know how to read the truth. And it's designed that way. It's not that it's wrong. The Bible, the other writings, they're designed this way on purpose because they eventually lead you to where you need to go. It doesn't happen like that. Sometimes, but not mostly. Thank you. You spoke the hard truths I was asking for this morning. A Nike kuyaiki. Thank you. That means thank you. I love you, Emily. I'm so grateful for you. I'm here to do that. You know, it pisses some people off. I'm going to tell you something. I'm always going to tell you the truth to the best of what my being knows how to tell you the truth. It isn't always going to feel good. Okay. And that's all right. What I'm going to ask you to is not to judge. Don't judge the, don't judge the messenger. Just take the message. I'm going to give you the message. Forget where it came from. Feel it instead. Because when you start judging the messenger, this stops us from feeling the message. And this is exactly where we are in the world. Have a beautiful day. I'm one of those shamans too, whatever that is. Of course. Do you want me to explain? Do you have a question? Uh, I'll explain what a shaman is. Um, I'll just explain that real quick. It's just a word. Uh, it means that I've trained 
uh, to I've trained under human teachers to uh, pass down uh, ancient human intelligences, teachings, and technologies uh, to bring forth awakening and adaptation and evolution of the earth. That's what that means. It means that I am one with the earth. I am one with creation. Uh, another thing I've heard is one who knows. And it means one who knows, knows that they're creation. I know that I'm one with source, just as you are. I'm not, I, so I'm not saying I'm one with source and you are not. I'm saying we all are. Jesus was saying the same thing. And Jesus, too, was a form of shaman. He wasn't a Christian. Okay. He was sharing truths from around different ideas, like because he traveled all over the place. He had all kinds of different teachings within him, and he shared with him. Another way to look at shaman means one who walks the path of the master. And that master isn't something outside of you. You are the master. It's walking the path of the internal master because the master is always you. Because you are God. You are creation itself, experiencing itself. Okay? So thank you. So yes, you definitely are. If you're here and you're watching this show and you sat here and took the time to be with me, yes, you are directly connected to source light and energy. Keep using it. If you sit here and you don't understand most of what I'm saying and I just freak you out and all those kinds of things, that's okay too. Seeds can be planted. And, you know, I, I am not for everyone. I'm connecting and I'm sharing with the world a fourth level consciousness, one that is not polarized. I don't come on here. You don't hear me talking about what's good and what's bad because it's all good or bad. If you want to look at it that way, you have a choice. I'm here to tell you you have a choice. I choose and instead of making wrongs, finding the wrongs because that's what I used to do. That's like conspiracy theorism. It's looking for all the wrongs instead of looking at what the, you know, and that's fear and anger. You know, instead, I want to see the rights and create more right. Right. And that's just a frequency to get rid of the words frequency. It's a frequency. Do I want it to feel heavy or do I want it to feel light? I have the choice to where I place my attention because wherever your attention goes, your energy flows. Step into the light. <laughs> have a beautiful day. Well, thank you. I was mostly joking. Oh, that's okay. I like jokes. Jokes are fun. I mean, you know, it's hard to decipher jokes through text. You know, I can't, you know, it's here and there. You know, like when somebody says whatever that is. I mean, that's, you're telling me you don't really know what that is. And that's okay. I'm going to tell you what it is. And that's cool. That's really cool. All right, so we got lots of events coming up. Anybody that's in town, come visit us tonight at Sacred Waters. We're going to be at Sacred Waters tonight at 7 p.m. Uh, doing some breath work, uh, some sound bath, and some community. Uh, I think uh, it showed me something. I won't say anything too much. We'll do some energy clearing tonight. That's really powerful, especially in group. Manifest, maybe. Something powerful. Uh, and then there's uh, Saturday. It's going to be so fun. Saturday, 3 p.m., Shamanic Healing Circle, Wolf Picnic Area. Okay, so it's going to be outside, and we're going to do a healing circle like we did a few weeks ago. Uh, it's really cool. I bring out my small massage table, and we set it up under the trees, and then we come in, and then I take, oh, right here, my abalone shell. I have this cool abalone shell, and then I put some uh, different types of resin in there, and then I... Uh, I smudge everyone, clear their energy fields, get them ready to do the work. And then what we do is we make a circle around the table and we hold hands. As we hold hands, we become unified. And then I just, whatever instructions come in, I don't really plan anything from there. I know that's what's going to happen. And as it happens, we bring together our energy. And then I take a person one at a time out of the circle and I put them on the table. And as they're on the table, I run some energy and I have the group run energy with us in the circle. The circle creates a vortex, a circular vortex of energy. And then I have everybody also doing a Saman Chukui and grounding the energy into the earth. Okay, so what it does is it creates this really strong energy vortex right where we're at. And that park is already a strong energy vortex. I've been working in that 
before I was a shaman, before I knew anything about this, it was just all intuition. And I was there connecting with the nature beings and nature and trees and all kinds of things. So uh, that's open to anybody that wants to try it out. I recommend it. Uh, and then uh, we got some next week. We have sound bath at Old Brooklyn Nutrition, uh, sacred owl meeting, and uh, then it'll take us into the next month. We have some other stuff. Something really cool coming up. We're having a fireside mini retreat. So that's Saturday, the 2nd, September 2nd. That's in Walton Hills. So that's where we do our mini retreat, where we set up a big um, ice tub. I set up the big tub with ice, an ice bath, and then we float flowers in there. And then what I usually, what I'm going to have people do, and I did last time, is we use the heads of sunflowers. That's what we float in there. And I have you come, each person, before anyone takes a bath, everybody kind of gives a prayer to the sunflower and blesses the water. So it's like a, really like a form of baptism is what it is. And then I give you some instructions when you're in the water to give and then receive. Because water is an ancient, ancient energy, an ancient, we call her Mama Unu in our tradition, or Mother Water. And she's very powerful for helping us cleanse, cleanse, and then open up to be able to uh, ascend. And we've had some really intense uh, experiences with this, like people that, you know, they do the bath, not always right when the bath is happening, because energy can have an echoing effect. They get in the bath and they come out and they feel really good because of the dopamine and everything. But then days pass and then new parts of their life begin to open because we're all working together. That's what it is. I'm creating togetherness. These events aren't meant to be shows and circuses and all those things. I'm trying to create opportunities for loving people who want to create a more beautiful world, create a more accepting, loving world of healing and uh, higher consciousness and beauty for us to come together and create that because we are each part of the one living creation. I'm also working on some online events. Okay. I started, just started with those and I just started to devise those. So be on the lookout. I'm going to do more online events. I'm also going to offer more shamanic training classes, different than the ones I'm doing right now. The ones I'm offering right now are pretty intricate and the people that are in there are people that are, you know, are kind of advanced into where they're at as far as energy. I'm going to start some that are more into a, you know, beginners or maybe even like, um, what's the other word? Curious, spiritually or energy curious kind of level. Because if you're just kind of at the beginning and you come into one of these kind of classes I'm teaching, it might be overwhelming, you know, and it won't be for you. So I'm working on creating. I want to, I have this drive right now to create. I want to really create some beautiful things. Yay. Yes. Uh, uh, God bless you and have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you. I am interested. Cool. Let's do it. I've been physically and spiritually attacked. When was that? Is that now? I've done some events up here, but ain't no party like a positive pineapple party. I love you, Tom. I love you, Tom. Uh, yeah. I love all of you so so much and i hope that you have a beautiful day and uh, a beautiful rest of your week and then i'll be back on tuesday uh for more morning breath where we can share i hope you've enjoyed this morning's um um connection i hope you've enjoyed this morning's breath and teaching and channeling and our time that we get to spend here together and share together i want to send you off with my deepest love mm. i love you all so much and i'm so proud of you I want you to know that too. I'm proud of you. And I want you just to keep going. And God wants you just to keep going. The creator wants you to just keep going. You got this. You are creation itself. And you are a beautiful, walking, talking, breathing miracle. Whew. See you soon.